All right, let me know when you see it, boss. Hmm? Let me know when you see it. Live. All right, that's what's up. I'm trying to get back to the um back to the screen. There we go. Good evening, Mr. Dixon. Good evening, good evening. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. Good, good, good. So let's go ahead and get this prayer going and get this topic of discussion started on tonight. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to share with your incredible people yet again. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on what we should and should not be saying, what is beneficial to those that are on the receiving end of this conversation. We pray for all those watching that they have a great have had a great day and will have a great evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, Mr. Dixon, yeah. here we are back again, back to our regularly scheduled program. Good to see you, sir. How's your week been so far? Uh, it's been pretty good, pretty busy, but no complaints. You ready for Valentine's Day, Mr. Dixon? The day, <laughs> yeah, the day will be valid and full of time. Valid may not Indeed. be a time. It's going to be a valid day? Absolutely. Oh Lord, I, I just can't. I, I don't even know what to say from there. I just valid, love, and time. That's what you got to put valid, them all together. Valid, love, and time. Valid, love with time. That's what it is. That's uh, what it's gonna be. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the backdrop from tonight. Is there anything that that is pressing on your mind right now, Mr. Dixon? Before I read this dissertation that I wrote about this topic on tonight. Um, this is a this is a very interesting topic because. I mean, it's not it's not necessarily anything new under the sun, but I don't think it's really been challenged correctly. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely something that needs to be tapped into because it is an issue. It is a big issue, sure. a big issue. So let me pull up this backdrop and we're going to talk this out. Mm -hmm. Here it is. In the art of love comes the conflict of the old friends versus the new relationship. The struggle is a real one that cannot be swept under the rug. Although this may be uncomfortable for the new person entering into your space, it is healthy to keep connections with others of the opposite sex in its proper place. Yet we have to question the beneficial component to the connection and how it affects what we are attempting to build with our new person. Is this someone that you, that's been in the picture? platonically for a number of years? Is this a person or someone who is tying up the loose ends in your life? Or is this a person who is a former lover now turned friend? Are we going to ha able, be able to handle this in the space that is us? I believe the air has to be real clear when we dance around this issue. Our person should be privy to the truth that surrounds our former attachments. While we all, uh oh, that lost. While we all have to negotiate what will work in our relationships, we have to be realistic in understanding that we are not the only person of the opposite sex that exists in our significant other's life. We can explore the need for what's old while enjoying the new, the conflict and comfort that comes with the two. I know we committed, but I want to keep the friends that are most beneficial to me. Mm. Mm. Tonight. No, that, that topic, I mean, the way you phrase it that way, it almost sounds when, you, when you're adding that beneficial to me portion, it sounds very selfish. <laughs> oh, good. You know, this has been a, I mean, I'm telling you, this instance is very challenging because, like I said, sometimes you may have dated someone or, or, you know, even been in a relationship or I've even seen people who mentioned they were once married, but they got get along now better as friends in the way from the marriage, right? So obviously you can't tell anyone, you can't try to explain to someone or try to convince them if they feel as though it's innocent. I just think it, it comes down to a matter of how both sexes honestly see it 
and we don't really convey it to our people the way we really feel. We kind of go along to get along for the sake of not disrupting the relationship as long as something very offensive doesn't occur. But other than that, we kind of just be quiet, but but be irritated behind the closed doors. You know what I'm saying? And see, and see that's 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 not good. If yeah. you're quiet and you're irritated behind closed doors, because that's that's another era of deception where we're not being totally truthful about how we really feel about what's really going on. Right. You know, this this whole idea is disturbing at best. And the reason why I say it's disturbing at best is because people have a tendency to constantly and habitually say they want something new, right? Or they mm -hmm. want to experience a new and they're done with this and done with that. But they have this innate need to gravitate toward what's common, what's familiar, and what has been. Like they just can't release it. It's something something that goes on in their mind and says, oh, I just got to have you and you, you mm. know. But I feel like, you know, I feel like it's so many different areas that you can dance around when you think about this. Like people have a reason why they have to keep that person. Okay. You know, like when I said about the tying up the loose ends, right. that's a big one. That's a big one yeah. because if, you, if you're talking about people who have had this person of a common interest, if you will, saying that they okay. just their friend, you know, it's my friend, but my friend helps pay my bills. My mm. friend transports the kids when I can't get the kids from here, there and everywhere. Right. You know, my friend does this and my friend does that. When the house needs to be repaired, my friend comes over and he helps do this and that. So my whole thing is, well, what's in it for him if he's doing all this stuff? Or her, yeah. Right, or yeah. her, yeah. Him yeah. or her. Yeah. If they if they contribute in all this, then why why you need a new person if they doing well, all this? Here's what the thing I think everybody misses, um, because I mean I've clearly been well I've certainly been in scenarios where I may have I remember I was dating a person and when they would mention their friends. It almost seemed like the way the, the the perspective that they would mention them in, it was almost as if, well, if you can't do this or if you're not available for this, my friend, it was like a threat almost. It was like they were po posing the person to be like, well, if you're not, quote unquote, on every inch of your game here, then my friend will go with me or he'll do this or he'll come over and wait. He'll take me to get my car. Well, guess what? You know, pretty much where that went. You need to be with your friend. You know, anyway, so now the point I'm saying is this. <laughs> Here's the thing. People need to understand the most important thing that a person can offer you, anyone else is their time. So if a person is giving you their time, if they just have casual time, let's just say there's a perfectly good looking or, or a person that has their ducks in a row, got their stuff going straight, and they are just sitting on, they're sitting on tap waiting for P Coffee to have an issue to break down her life or some help and I'm going to run to the occasion, right? Nobody mm -hmm. does anything for nothing. Nobody loves you that much, right? Nobody's just going to sit around as your friend and say, hey, you know, so you, you, want me to, you say your son got sick at school? Well, I'm going to take off my job and go right on over there and pick him up. People, people do these things because um, inwardly they have uh, ulterior motives that they have yet to communicate with you. Maybe, maybe you've heard this. Oh, that's just Jack. Me and him have been friends since high school. Well, guess what? Jack has been enamored with you since high school. He just hasn't been bold enough to tell you. He He's your friend behind the door, but he desires much more. So is that deceptive? That's very deceptive because, okay, here's here's where the thin line is is with that. Because sometimes the person you may be thinking in your mind that is innocent. But the right. person on the other end is guilty of wanting something more than what they've alluded to as far as you're concerned. Because you don't have right. any you don't have any knowledge of it. You just right. you just in the mix and don't know what's really popping off. When all the while the person the reason why they're doing that is they're trying to build that probability to a reality. They got that the confidence. They, they want to build right. that confidence in you. Absolutely. Yeah, so they're simple. like, hey, I'm here for you. I'm doing this. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to make sure this happens. I'm going to make sure that happens. So bam, at some point, you're going to give me this. You know, whatever this is in the head, like, you it's the, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, okay, it's almost, I'm, we're getting closer. I'm getting closer. I done did this and I did that. And I know she, and I know she liked this and that and that. And see, this is where the bridge gets crossed. You know, the, you know, the biggest indication that it's more than friends 
is when that person started buying gifts. Right? Yeah. So yeah. one of my so one of my friends told me recently said that his girlfriend, right? Okay. He said his girlfriend has a friend who helps with all the stuff around the house, right? Okay. But then he came over to visit her and she had an Apple Watch. Now, mind you, she had had a conversation with him about this watch, right? Her, her, boy, her real boyfriend. Her real boyfriend. Okay. Right. Now, he didn't buy the watch. But when he got to her house, the watch was on the counter, okay? okay. So he said, well, where, where you got the watch from? She said, um, well, um, you know, he just bought it from me. It ain't no big deal. And he said, well, what, what you mean he just bought it from you? Ain't no big deal. That is something more than him. Why would he go buy you a Apple Watch? You know how mm. expensive an Apple Watch is? That's not a that's not yeah. no cheap investment. That's a right. real that's a lot of money involved. Right. So right. why would he just buy you abruptly? Just go buy you an Apple Watch. Well, you know, in in a case like that, um, back up to what you said a second ago. You know, it's not that it's not just that the person that's hoping is being deceptive. Sometimes the recipient f knows full well what's going on. They just there there is an exchange involved that they don't want to disrupt. There's a service happening that um, the person said, yeah, yeah, they like me, but they just my friend. And you full aware the person like you, but the person is doing this exchange and service a favor, so you're not going to mess up what's working. That's the, that's the real selfish part right there. And see, that's where the problem is. So what what is the need for the new person if you got the old one? You know, you, you then, know and then there's a, there's another problem too. If you got this person who's been able to give you these certain whatever this is, right? right. And then your new person may not be at that same level to right. compete with what that person is doing. Then right. there goes another era of selfishness because I'm holding on to this because this person can provide for me what I really want, although I like the idea of you because you provide maybe the emotional support or whatever, but the tangible physical stuff, like the dude can help pay the mortgage, he can help do this and right. blah, 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 blah. But I know that I can't really depend on you to do that, although I really want you, but he provides this comfort, this air of comfort that I have when I don't have to worry about this, that, and the other. And we're not talking about like a baby daddy, you know, or somebody who has a vested interest in making sure that everything on my end is ran smoothly. We're just right. talking about this guy or this yeah. girl. You know what I'm saying? Like she's just yeah. doing him favors. What 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 are you doing him favors for? You know, mm. and this is where the question comes in that everybody tries to dance around and don't want to talk about. But a lot of this stuff has been a result of like I said in, in in the narrative, a lover turned friend. Correct. Yeah. Because they, there's no real lo logical reason why somebody wants, they just find so much, so much in you that they just got to do all these things. I mean, you're just so important to me. I just got to do it all for you. Right. You know, it's, it's something else going on where somebody is not telling the truth, the whole truth, so help them God. If Correct. You, Correct. you know, something being left out of the equation. And the, and the, you know, and like I said, I've had plenty of these discussions and it's really, it's a tough one to solve with someone who just simply doesn't see it, see it as an offense, right? Because I mean, clearly I was sharing with someone earlier that if you talk to, men, if you talk to most men and you ask them, how do they feel about their wife or their girlfriend, whatever, woman, whatever, and she's cool with someone of an that's an ex, but they've been intimate. And I said most guys will say no. Women will tell you, oh, I know we were intimate, but I ain't thinking about him in no shape, form, or fashion. He's just my friend. But to men, we're like that may be the case, but he has gone beyond the veil and has seen and experienced the same thing as I. So that's a problem for us because now. There is no assim there is no assimilation of difference. It's like yeah. what's the difference between the old and the new if you're holding him us in the same basket? What's the difference? Wow. If anything, wow. he's more of a threat because he's more familiar at the present time. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And so mm. it's um and he has had you know how they say sometimes you deal with the devil that you know than one you don't, right? So you right. have had that history with him 
to be able to determine, or her to be able to determine, or kind of know where she, where her ebbs and flows, this, that, and the other, but we just chose not to work out, so we're cool, but we, we get along well. But as long as you are um, two functioning uh, male and female species, there is always that looming elephant in the room of do we potentially ever cross that bridge again? Because sometimes if you're a trusted friend, one of the, um, I mean, the word friend, period, the word friend, um, period, is one of the most, uh, it's one of the most deadliest things in relationships and love today. But it's also the best position to be in. You know, right. it's the best position. If you if you be somebody's friend, you're, I mean, you have access beyond access, just being mm -hmm. their friend. So, mm -hmm. which is, but, but the deadly portion of it is when the abuse of the access comes into play on both sides, when both people are abusing that access or somebody may have had, let's just say you and your husband had a terrible argument, but your friend, he owns this bar. So you go down there and you maybe you have some wine and he's sitting there talking to you and right, because you all were close, you, the relationship is over, but you do remember having a great sexual chemistry with him. So mm -hmm. you're hurting, you crying, mm -hmm. he's consoling you. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, you telling them somebody you're coming home late and you down at the motel, hotel, wherever. You get my drift. So it can happen. If you make, if you make it yeah. to the hotel and not just the alley behind the, the bar yeah. where y'all at on tonight. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, well, that sounds, that sounds a little racy. I'm just trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. But okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, I don't this know. Ain't got, this ain't got nothing to do with me. I was trying to say, not just the alley, I bought the truck or something. But no. Okay, but the yeah, truck. I mean, okay. But All yeah. right, the truck. The truck. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, know. It's, it's, see, that's, that is where the honesty component really needs to be intact in the relationship right. to where you actually tell your person, you know, there's another thing too that people don't accept that is the truth too. When you feel vulnerable about a situation or a circumstance, you should be able to tell your person, when you make me feel like this, it makes me want to run into John's arms. Mm, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You should be able to tell them that so that y'all can address what is it about how I make you feel that wants you want, want, makes you want to go back to John's arms? What's going but here's on? The, but here's the bigger you, you question. The, yeah. But the bigger question is, why is John still perched where he is? Oh, That's the bigger. Forget okay. about I want to go back there. Why is he sitting over there? Why? Why do you have him positioned in this execution of stay? You know, why is he sitting over there? Why is he there? That why is he this? Because that right there, as long as some, as long as a man or a woman has somebody who says, I understand. I know you're married to P. Coffee, but we're still cool. Don't worry. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to support you. That's the that's the worst situation because you can always tap into that whenever you need to, and it's unfair to the other person. You understand what I'm saying? But Especially see, if you got history. That's why I said that. That's the reason why yeah. it needs to be the person needs to be honest enough. See, here's a, here's a bigger picture. You got to be okay with whatever that person's truth is, although you don't like it. Correct. You understand Correct. what I'm saying? If it, it might not sit well with you, and you might not like what the truth is. But I would rather for you to tell me, hey, P. Coffee, I, you, when you do that, it makes me really want to, it don't, it don't make me want to move forward with you. It makes me feel, you know, a certain type of way. Right. And, you know, in my relationship, when I had a, a, a good comfort and a good peace and we had some great synergy in my, you know, my prior experience, it makes me gravitate towards looking back to getting that intact again. And of mm. course, with the physical component added to that, evidently the girl made you feel some type of way as well in order for you to say well you know i i could vacillate backwards if the you know if the situation doesn't find itself making me feel like i'm i'm a part of this equation or i feel respected by you or whatever the case might be so that's why a lot of these doors have to be closed completely before you walk to the next step because if the doors aren't closed completely that's where the real problem comes in it's almost like a person is just holding this person in the balance, like a placeholder, just in case something goes wrong over here. Right. So those people are just nothing more than real, they placeholders. You know, they that, sitting exactly in the back, is. just waiting yeah. on, you know, in case something fall apart, I'm gonna be right, I'm the cleanup. You know, that's, that's, but, but, how, that, that's how that song cleanup woman came to be from back yeah, but, in the day. But think about, think about when we are out and we have like a, you know, you might have a car accident or someone gets shot across town. Think about it. When you are hurt and damaged, 
you go to the nearest hospital from where the accident happened. You don't go, you don't say, take me back home to the comfort of my home so I can get myself together. So I'm saying that to say, we go to the nearest person that got the gauze and the bandages sitting there to patch us up. We, we go to the first person that's, oh, you like, I'm, yeah, he dogged me out or she did this to me and don't worry. And you know, and we don't give ourselves a chance to heal. We just go, we gravitate to the person that's ready to there to be the medic at the time. And it, it gets us, a lot of times we end up in situations where we really didn't get a chance to really get, get a, a good idea of the person before we got into it. And we end up intimate and we moving along. And then later on, you notice you don't have that much in common or you don't know that much about them. I haven't met their this, that, and the other. It's too late to go in reverse at that point. You've already started. You know? And see, that, that's the thing. You know, and then I think about the other component is the legitimate platonic friends that have been around for a long right. time, but they don't like you. They don't like you mean the, the other person. They don't like the person's yeah, person. They don't like okay, gotcha. the, you know. They don't like the person, but because they've been so loyal to this relationship, friendship, whatever you want to call it, the other person doesn't want to release them. How you deal right. with that? Right. Um, you, to you gotta you just. I mean that that's that's on the onus of the person who has the friend. Like if let's just say in your case, if it's your guy, he has to say. He has to have that conversation to say, look, you know, this isn't Carolyn or whoever, the so and so mm -hmm. that was here before, but mm -hmm. me and her are kicking it, and we're gonna give this a healthy, healthy go at it. So I need you, you know, if you're gonna be around in a space where we are, at least respect her. You ain't got to love her, but respect her around. You know, don't make stuff all uncomfortable around me and her. You get my joke? Right. Especially, yeah. you know, like especially when, especially if it's been legitimately platonic. But that's that same thing that you talked about earlier, Mr. Dixon, when you said the person had that back of their mind thought about their possibly becoming something more. But now they see this new person as a threat to, that course, to their to their to their access. So perfect example, when I was doing when I was back recording the last album I did some years ago, I was hanging out with this guy and he was in um he used to be kind of like in the studio all the time. You know, he was kind of like a producer, or whatever, kind of heavy set guy. But he had this friend, and me and the guy that was the engineer, we would always have these questions because this lady would pick him up all the time. He'd be like, my ride outside. We'd be like, who is that? And we look outside, and there's this very nice-looking woman in this Mercedes. She had this drop top. And she, we were like, who's this place? You know, he kind of made it come across as it's just maybe it's a friend of his, like somebody he's dating, but he didn't really give us a skinny. So the next time I saw him at the hotel, I was like, all right, drop, drop the truth. Who, who is this person? So then he said, look, he said, she's... um." She's been my friend for over 20 some odd years. Me and her go way back, like, you know, like a hairline, or whatever. He's saying, right, oh, I'm like, right, okay, right. cool. And, he was, and I said, so you never dated? He, he said, I said, you never dated her? He said, oh, no, man, we've been friends. I said, oh, did she just didn't date, want to date you? And he bust out laughing, right? And I was like, so I said, so that's, tell, I said, let's dispel the myth here. I said, so if this person ever told you, on your way to taking you home or destination, wherever she helps you, because he had a cane. So my thing, I guess she was kind of helping him around. And mm -hmm. I said, if she ever told you, I want to come up and stay, what would you say? Yeah, I'm going to let her stay. I said, well, you ain't being a friend. <laughs> you ain't being honest. Uh... You're not being honest. I said, so if you, I asked him next, I wanted to see, because you're being secretly deceptive if that's how you feel and you're not acting on it. Because if you feel that way, then if she's single, why not act on it? So if you're gonna hold, don't hold it back secretly, and then when the convenience, when it's convenient, or she, or she throws it on the table, you take it. Because if you really are a friend, you're gonna be like, you're not thinking the best. You know, we know we've been friends for 20 years. We don't need to jump into this. You know, if you really, at least you're gonna stop there first, not just say, come on upstairs. You're not really gonna friend. <laughs> you're being opportunist, opportunistic. <laughs> On tonight. On yeah. tonight. I'm yeah. scratching my head over here on that one. Yeah. You know, that's that's just there has to be some really defined lines when it comes to this friend idea. Yeah. In totality. Because it can it can really bring some right. serious harm to a person that you never you didn't you didn't even intend to hurt them in any kind of way, form, or fashion. Right. But they caught in the crossfire of what was and what you're trying to develop as is. Mm. So your person gets caught inside of this crossfire that they had, they don't even know they in the crossfire. They're not even aware that they caught in the in, in, in the menage a trois, if you will. Mm. You know, 
where you got this person who really wants you versus you know you want her. Right. And it's somewhere inside of our mind, we feel like we got to keep the person that was there for some kind of security blanket. It's almost like it's almost like Snoopy. Remember when remember Snoopy and um, Linus had that blanket? He took that blanket everywhere. He never, mm. no matter what the circumstance was, Linus had that blanket. He was not going to be without well, that. You know, if, if, if we're honest, this is what it comes down to. Today, if we're really honest, we, we are loving in factions. We're not necessarily loving wholly. And what I mean by that is we're, we're with you, so to speak. We're with you, P. Coffee, mm. but there's a huge uh, 40, 35 to 40% of us that still love this person. And you ask them why? Because they've been very loyal in my life. Okay, so they want to move on, but this person is very loyal. So I drag them along like my bank blanket. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, whatever, they're not loyal enough for me to kind of decipher what the real issue is to make it work. They're just mm -hmm. loyal enough to carry around, like right? a heavy backpack, which mm -hmm. is un unhealthy. But the thing is, we here's what I always get confused at. Like, I'm obviously I'm a man, so I'm a, I have to look at it from the females' angle of it. But I talk to people that I know that my friends, and when they mention this carrying a friend thing along, it's when you ask them why are these people still in your life? Oh, because I mean sometimes I need some favors, I need this, this, that, and the other. And so I say, well, okay. So it's, it's either you're independent or you're dependent. Because some of us aren't as independent as we claim. Because if you're de right. if you're independent, you are um, you are uh, free of dependency, right? So meaning right, you're right. not you're not needing someone to come over and shovel or come over and do fix your sink, whatever it is that you're mm -hmm. keeping these people around for. So if you're keeping them around, are you really independent, or are you truly an independent? Per I mean, de a dependent person in denial. One of the two, but you. But if you feel like you need to have these psychological, uh, 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 you know, psychological holes, constraints around you with these people in your life, why? Why are they there? You know, what do you what do you need them for? Well, see that. See, here's another thing that people don't want to. I mean, that that's the sign and indication that the person is not whole in totality right. internally. That they right. that, that they're. See, everybody's supposed to exist in our world outside of us, not in inside of us. And so a lot right. of people put people in the wrong space. You Correct. understand what I'm saying? They have them in the wrong position and the wrong space. Right. It's right. like if you play in chess, it's only a certain position that the pawn is going to be in. Mm. I don't care how you slice the pie, that pawn is only going to be in one particular position. And mm. so people have put people in the wrong position. Right. inside of their mental matrix, whatever that means, you know, right. inside of their mind, they have these people poised for this and this one postured for that and blah, blah, blah. But in all those positions, it still doesn't give them the complete package of what right. it is that they really want out of the equation, right. what they really want to see manifest, you know? So right. I got, a, like you said, I got a bit of this one, a bit of that one, a bit of that one, and a bit of that one, and it creates a hole. It's like Humpty right. Dumpty fell, on, fell off the wall and I'm trying to put them back together again. Right. But I see all these openings and crevices from where I try to put them back together again, but it just don't fit. Right. So they got all these bits, pieces. This I got a little bit from that one over there, a little bit from that one over there, and a taste from that one over there. And so now I'm happy. I'm, yeah. I'm totally happy because I got a piece of this and a piece of that and a, and a, and a smidgen of that and a smidgen of this. But well, in, really, in, in the bigger really, picture, yeah, they say they want a whole healthy relationship but you right. can't have a whole healthy relationship like you said earlier if you're not a whole person you can't right. have something to exist outside of you that don't exist within you correct, correct. that don't work correct i mean we like i said we um we have resorted to what you said about positioning people we are uh, positioning people um for specific purposes you know you got some people you know hey some people are as blunt as they they'll come out and they'll tell you i keep this person around because every now and then i need a little something different and i know what they given i know what they're given and i like it and i'm like and i say well that's just crazy why, why not just then if that person doesn't make you uh, content at home you know physically then what are you what are you there for like why are you deceiving the house pretty much if, if they don't make you communication that's that communication right. When people right. want, see, that's what I said about the truth. People don't right. want to talk about all the facets of what the truth really means because they have a fear of loss. 
Right. They feel right. like there's a fear of loss and a fear of rejection. I'm going to either lose them or they're going to reject this particular part of what I'm trying to bring to the table. They're right. going to reject me if I tell them the truth about this, or they're going to reject right. me if I say I'm really not enjoying the sexual experience with them. I really right. want to tell them that the sex is whack, but I'd rather fake orgasms and make them think that I'm enjoying it because they enjoying it. And because right. of all the other stuff, I want to keep them. I want to keep everything because I, I want it to work within the confines of what works for me. So when I get done with him, he's my main one. But like you said, I'm gonna go over here to John's house and really get my plumbing worked on. You yeah, know, my take, I really want my care. pipes. Clean. So Correct. you know, I'm gonna go to Johnny's house and he gonna really thoroughly clean my pipes. Right. You know? Right. But the guy at home is really believing that this woman is totally sold out. And committed to the whole thing because she's 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 selling him something that he can't even buy. He can't afford to buy it because he can't compete right. with him. he can't compete with that guy. Yeah. Right, he can't. Right, if he's he traveling a good day, he can. No. But see, this is but this is why the biggest component of this whole thing it all comes back to selfish. You know, we we want our cakes cakes plural. And we want to eat, we want you to eat them with us. We want to oh. have, have our cakes and you sit down and have dinner with me too. But I still won't have all my cakes. And so that's mm -hmm. that's the era we we are in. And that's why so many people are moving the way they are. Because people don't they don't they feel like why do I need why do I need to necessarily choose? Why can't I hold on to you too? Because truth be told, people are becoming less and less inclined to cut people off because they're losing confidence in 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 people's. Uh, integrity today nobody really has confidence in anyone's integrity so people are like saying well look i don't know when next time i'll meet someone like like johnny so i'm gonna keep johnny around even though silver is a great man he's a good father and he'll be good for my family i'll be with him but johnny's like you said johnny is the real pipe man that you like right so right, right. not that not that sex is where the end all be all but right. everybody needs to be honest about where their truth lies some people put a lot of value in sex some mm -hmm. people put a lot of value in somebody meeting their emotional needs. Somebody right. wants somebody spiritual. It depends. So wherever your value is, that's where you need to go. If that's where your value is, go to Johnny. Because it's not going to matter how noble of a man I am if you don't feel like the job is being done. But see, that's no that, 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 see, that's that that's goes back to the person not being healthily whole. Because if you if you put too much emphasis in one area, there's going to be a defect and malnutrition in another area. Which brings mm. me, speaking of malnutrition, Mr. Dixon. Oh my goodness. I was over at your at your um, posting um, <laughs> facilities facilities, um, if you will, here recently. Oh, and wow. um I saw something that uh mm -hmm. kind of piqued my curiosity about the malnutrition components of relationships. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On tonight. I think I'm a, I'm gonna dive over there and see if I can't locate that. Comment. Oh, You're talking wild, look. <laughs> my lord. Yeah, that that kind of sparked my interest. I was like, uh, malnutrition. Maybe this is the real reason why people are going through what they're going through because, in some way, shape, or form, they don't have proper nutrition in mm. their relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Let me see if I can um, sneak over here to your to your office and, and locate this information, if you will. Mm -hmm. I was looking at that, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Here it is. <laughs> the issue of malnutrition. Mm. When it comes to a well-balanced meal, most nutritionists will suggest that you consume at least three balanced meals per day. So if we were to equate this to the physical appetites of humans, one would assume this is applicable in instances where people are married, occupying the same residence, and or even have the time to maintain such upkeep. Three times a day, that's a lot of upkeep. Um, just, as a mother <laughs> just as a mother feels the burden to feed her children whenever they're hungry, how do we look at feeding our prospective partner a balance sexual diet. If we're going off the notion that we nurture and feed those we care for, what are we saying to those we starve? Mm. If we're mm. being truthful, we sow where we desire to see growth. And so if the person no longer desires to attend to the crop, are they saying they're leaving the crop to wither and die? If you're married and in or in, in, in a commitment, one of the most 
indicative signs of looming separation is a tactic of sexual starvation, and this is the default setting to the status of weak and in need. Understanding the truth here is that both parties need to eat, so while they're starving you, the question begs, who's feeding them? What about those who offer the occasional meals on wheels? Hence, the situation shifts. While the suggestion of good looking out, if it's an isolated meal to reduce to once a week or once a month, can anyone realistically live off that? At the end of the day, what I am saying, either shoot for instances where you can consume a balanced diet or simply choose to feed yourself. Proper mm. nutrition matters. Mm. Mm. All right. Mm, let, me ta- let me let me say this about that, <laughs> that posting on tonight, um, Mr. Dixon. Well. <laughs> You know, let me let me just spread my wings a little bit on this. You know, here herein lies the truth of the whole matter. Mm-hmm. Putting things in perspective, the real question is, and I know you don't like this word, but what is the need oh, within the scope okay, good, of good. the blood? I know you don't like that word. I know it's a cut word. That's I'm like the, no, go ahead. Well, what is I'm the need of what? Bad words, but you know. <laughs> There is a thing, such thing as need, and a need yes. has to be met. It's Correct. not. It's not a question about if it's going to be met. It's how, when, where, and who. Yes. Is going is going to meet it on tonight. Mm. You know. Wow. So when you put that that up there with the starvation, I was like, dang, that 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 ties into the topic that we're talking about tonight because a lot of this need is because there's a void inside the scope of that relationship, which. Mm most often can be filled if you, we can talk about it. Let, let me say this, Mr. Dixon. Let me go ahead and say this while I'm preaching. Let me, let me go ahead and say this. <laughs> One thing that I know emphatically about us as a people, people of yeah. color, okay? Mm-hmm. We don't communicate with each other well. Right. We have a tendency to talk at each other, but talking right. to each other is not something that we've mastered, okay? Correct. Correct. So a lot of this stuff is a result of our inability to connect on a very intimate level Level. to where you and I understand exactly what the expectation is, what the need is, and how the need can be met effectively so that not you or me are missing something out of the equation in all fairness. Because right. here's here's the bigger picture. If I'm always pulling on you to say, I need, I need, I need, that means that you're being starved and mm. vice versa inside the scope of the relationship. So there has to be a balance even inside that equation because you, you, you can go from starvation to obesity. Mm. Yeah, you, so you don't right. want to jump well, over way, from yeah. right. being starved to being fat. Right. Because right. if you came in nourished, don't nobody want you to jump obese. Right. And don't right. nobody want you to get too skinny either. Right. Because it ain't a good fit either way. Well, here's the thing. Many of us are paired with the wrong cooks. Oh, um, the okay. best cook is the person who can anticipate your dietary needs without asking you a question. The Very person good. that can come in there and they already know, oh, I'm not going to put no salt in this thing. It's not good for this, that, and I'm not going to do too much of this. Here you go, honey. This is just like you like it. Right. It's hard to find that. But what That's we're good. doing now is we are Im- we are improvising with these mm-hmm. cooks that we have. And we don't like certain things, but we're dealing with it. And and sometimes in that dealing capacity, you might just you might just consume the meal. But then what you're going to do is you're going to do what many of us do, and we participate in the under the bed ministry of snacks. You oh. drag snacks back and take them back for convenience because the meal that you get is really not satisfactory. It's not leaving you with any sweet. Two uh, uh, attributes at all, and you're like, this, this is just. I appreciate her putting all this into this, but this is wow. bland. Not really wow. like how I like it, but wow. she's nice. But I'll take these little candies right on back here because, because in the middle of the night, I get a little. I need a little urge. I can grab mm. it. That's what we do. If we're honest. You know, it, here's a little, little bit more honesty about the snack packing. <laughs> um, the snacks have to be under the pillow, um, as opposed to under the bed. It's just too much energy to try to go under the bed to get the snacks. That's mm. that's too much work. That so, depends on your reach. But go ahead. Yeah, I need to be able to mm. access the snacks yeah. underneath the pillow immediately. Access, so I don't have to go far to get the need met. 
if you okay, will. Gotcha, so gotcha. Here's the other problem with that friend who I can easily access. Mm. I don't want them because they're accessible. That's yes. why they never made the cut. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's really right. why they didn't make the team. And, you know, I, we out here on this field and I'm coaching and everything. And I got this number one draft pick. <laughs> right. They don't never get to number one draft pick because they were too available, way too available. So I'm like, I don't even want you on the team. You ain't gonna never be. You can't. You ain't gonna even make the team. You're gonna be the water boy or the water girl, just so I can have you around because you're so you're so convenient to me that I can mm. always access you. Right. So because you're so convenient to me, here it is. I'm just gonna utilize you as the water person because I mm. gotta stay hydrated. Wow. So mm. since I got to stay hydrated and you want to make sure I am, then you grab the water bucket. Let's go. Wow. <sighs> Again, it's a, it's a brutal game. It's a brutal, brutal thing. And that's why your hopes, your hopes are you simply can, you simply are pairing yourself up with someone that, like you said, can communicate on that level. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I would respect the person, even if they're, I mean, even if I didn't like it, if there was some reason this person was around in your life and friends and always rushed me to the hospital when I had my baby, whatever the story is, right. talk about it. Just don't leave. I tell people, I tell people all the time, if you talk about it and at least put the person on notice, they ha they're not caught by surprise. The issue is later, a lot of times these mystery friends that have been around for years, we find them in precarious situations and we call off guard. Oh, and so now we don't want to hear that they're your friend because they're positioned to look like another person or sound like another person. I'm looking Absolutely. in your Facebook or your phone, your text, your email. They're sending you these things consistently. Who are they? Well, just my friend, really? You know what I'm saying? So right. when you don't talk about it, it looks more suspect. Right. It does. Yeah. It look, it, and then here, and then, and then when the topic comes up, there shouldn't be a pause. Yeah. In between the question and the answer, mm. it really shouldn't be any pause. If it's a pause in between the question and the answer, something ain't right. Wow. If you got to think about it, something ain't right. Unless you a serial liar and you've been conditioning yourself to lie so long that this is a part of your truth that you you know there is no pause because you've mastered the art of deception. Yeah. Other than that, the average person, if they get asked the wrong question at the wrong time, they're gonna take a pause. Right. Because they got to ponder what they're going to say. As opposed to when it's really the truth. Now, this is not this is not true of all scenarios, because sometimes you do have to be meticulous in how you respond right. to a person, depending on who's on the receiving end of that equation. But for the most part, if it's your person, it really don't need don't need a pause. We really right. don't need a pause. Just go right. ahead and, and say what it is. And let's get the skinny of it. And let's just stay naked, the whole equation. Let's just stay naked the whole time. Let's not put on no clothes. Let's mm -hmm. go back to the original Adam and Eve versus the one with the fig leaves. Let's not have no fig leaves in the relationship. The fig right. leaves is what got us where we are now. Right. So let's just stay naked about the whole thing. If I don't like something, you don't like something, you, you know, hey, I don't. And then, and then another thing, too, that people have to be really, really fair with. Mm -hmm. Say you don't like the person. That friend that's looming around, that's platonic, that ain't, you ain't never slept with him or whatever, just tell the truth and say, hey, I don't feel comfortable around them because they, like you talked about the access, their right. level of access with you makes me uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah, when uncomfortable. I'm not at your house, hell, they at your house. I mean, right. how does that work? Right, right. And you're not, you're not telling them about the line drawn in the sand because mm -hmm. I haven't said anything. So I right. think that's the responsibility of the partner to say, hey, this don't, this doesn't bring me. If you're uncomfortable, say, so say something. Right. This don't give mm. me no comfort. You know, but there's another scenario that we hadn't danced on. Okay. Sometimes you can't get away from a person that you've been with. Baby mama, baby daddy. Oh, um, ex permanent fixtures. Permanent fixtures. They, yeah. They're permanent fixtures inside yeah. of your equation. So you've had to befriend them in order to keep the harmony of whatever ties into that equation. Or mm -hmm. you can have a scenario where you was with a person and y'all didn't work out, but y'all still have to work together. You still got, you have the working relationships that happen too. Cause sometimes, hey, let's face it, people get together 
in you know in environments all the time we we know this to be so true they say you don't get your sugar honey don't don't do that at work yeah, yeah. but it's not realistic you know mm-hmm. so you got a lot of people who have been tied at the office because right. hey i'm with you all day long let's face it you got a lot of stuff going on in the office because i see you all day right you know, you giving me your time and your energy. You ain't got to go to lunch with me, but you're going to lunch with me. We're starting to build this little scenario going on, whatever, and the the lines become blurred. We cross them, and then we find out, hey, we're just not a good fit. Let's mm. with the small shoe ministries, you know, that you had right. on there the other day. But, right. you know, we find this is not a good fit, but I'm forced to stay plugged into this relationship whether I want to or not because, hey, let's face it, my mortgage got to be paid this month. I can't quit. Right. I still got to go to work. Wow. You know, unless it's, unless it's negative. And and a, the person, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's negative and the person makes it very uncomfortable, then some of these scenarios, like the exes and the, you know, right. the ex-husband, the ex-wife, the baby mama, the baby daddy, right. those things are just not avoidable. Right. And they have to be dealt with. But there's still well, a way to do it. But when, in those cases, when you when you got like baby moms or ex wife, whatever ex husband, though that onus is on the person that was tied to them. You know, granted, your your main concern is you don't you don't want to have an exchange where maybe there's a birthday party or someone's dropping off somebody and someone is disrespecting you for no reason. You know, like just maybe right. you know right. you would, don't be looking over here, don't, don't don't touch my son, all those kind of things like that. Right. Well, that's right. up to the parent of that child, the father, the one that's your guy, to be like, yeah. look, he should handle that. And unless you are inciting the riot yourself, trying to pick a fight with the person, right? If you just right. mind your business being quiet, he need to handle it or she needs to handle it, not you. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So right. I think we put ourselves. I think we put the onus on ourselves when we are tied to people. We feel like, well, now that you're in my world, I'm going to handle this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it sounds good. It's fine. But it's really not your responsibility. It's the responsibility of the parents. And you're you know in the wrong saying? position. You're back in the wrong yeah, position. position yeah. you're, you're still in the wrong position. And even, yeah. you know, and even honestly, when you cross over to a marriage with that person, it's still a line. It's yeah. still a line. Yeah. Because you still don't have, you still don't have no connection to that person, you have a connection to you, the, in the person you're married to, but that other person is still a third party. Correct. That still that still has and to be it handled. Is, it's, but it's up to him. It's up to them, right. him or her, right. to draw those lines in the sand. Right. But we got a yeah. whole lot of comments in here on tonight. We need to we need to hit these comments. All right, go ahead on. Go on. All right. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay. I see. Ooh, they they fired up in the, in the comments on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Gracie it says Charles is correct. It is always worse if the former relationship was longer or if you've known the guy longer. My guy says a former lover is just waiting for another chance. That's correct. a good one. Correct. Ex will return friend equals conflict in a new relationship. A true sign they haven't let go. If you're done, be done. That's what Katonia says. Yeah, that's it. Um Carrie says a person trying to build a healthy new relationship should stick with the most important words in matrimony. In, ma- in, in marital vows, forsaking all others. Right. right. Um, and then Katonia says, wow, why is the person sitting there in an, ex- in an execution of stay? Good stuff. Bruce says, this is good. I need the address. <laughs> the address <laughs> to where, Bruce? <laughs> you sending some ties and offering? Let me give you the cash app, Bruce. <laughs> Wow. And then uh, Gracie says, most people can't handle the truth, P. Coffee Brown. Deborah Bowie says, yes, P. Coffee, the truth is always better. However, most like playing games and lie for a living. Mm-hmm. And then um, Katonia says, most often when the friend doesn't like the new person off the break, it's exposure to how the friend really feels about their friend and they really like them more than a friend. That's what you were talking about earlier. That's what Katonia right. was saying. Yeah. Um, and then and then let's see. Deborah Bowie Brown says people use the word friend too loosely. You know you're not friends, but people will say that's my friend in hopes things turn into lovers. True. True. Bruce says he was there for me during a time I was really going through something. He's always gives me good advice. Yeah, good advice. Mm-hmm. I that's such that's a cla- classic. That's a classic. That's a classic. That's, a classic some, yeah. that's, that, that's the go to phrase. For a whole lot of women, just saying, yeah, right. you know, and and he just, you know, he understands me, or right. she understands me, you know, that's some foolishness. And well, then he, 
Because independent and self-sufficient are two different things, and that's very true. Self-sufficient is the way to be, not necessarily right. independent, but independent self-sufficient good. is really the way that we yeah. should be. Because you can be independent and have a hiccup. Yeah, yeah. You know, so hiccups will happen. But, but hiccups doesn't mean you have to have somebody on paid retainer. That just means you need to execute some action to you need to you need to uh you need to seek out some repairs at the moment and then it's done. It's not right. somebody you hold on retainer all the time. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's that sounds like what I got my attorney on. But yeah. okay now, okay then. Yeah, that's ooh. <laughs> you know what? That's that's good because you know it's funny. I remember when I did pay my attorney a retainer, right? Mm-hmm. And so I asked her one day, I said, does this mean I got you at my disposal? When I, She said, whenever you pick up that phone, because I got this money, I'm at your beck and call. Hmm. Now, well, that guess what? You, that once once that money not, left your hand, it went to her disposal to spend. So the using right. has already taken place. So it's on you to, to get your recoup. <laughs> right. But the right. bad part about that is with the retainer concept is, is that like you said that person is at liberty to do with whatever they want to do with what you what that retainer was. Give it. Correct. It doesn't yeah. really mean that you got the the have all be all access. Correct. Even Correct. though that's the suggestion. Yeah, that's a suggestion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you know, Deborah but, Brown says, oh, "I'm sorry. Go ahead." No, no, go ahead. Keep keep reading the comments. Go ahead. Says fear of loss and fear of rejection. Now that's the truth. Nick Tony said, "Good stuff. Wherever your value is, that's where you need to go." So true. That's something that we were talking about earlier. And then Kimberly Adiva said, there is a vulnerability and exposure of dependency and insecurities when one decides to cut off or release placeholders and friends. Very recently, I had a light bulb revelation. I was holding on to my friends because I wasn't able to trust my man to give me everything I felt I needed to remain in the relationship. I finally Mm. realized to say that I loved him meant I had to surrender myself fully to him and trust him and only him to hear my needs and meet them in order to to fully say I love him. I will say the decision to surrender renewed my commitment. I'm learning to fully trust him to meet the need. That's good. Mm, that's a that's real good. That's real good. That's yeah. strong right there. Joy but, said, but you see, oh, okay, you still you had, no, I know you had more. Go ahead. Keep on going. It's a whole bunch of them. But go ahead. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I was going to say, just like when we talk about the 80-20 rule and all those things. Right, right. It's, it's as if we are all, if you look at it, if we were all to go to Vegas, we would all crap out and, and have, sell our mortgages because we are bad gamble investors. And when right. I say that, because we will ruin the 85% for the 15. You know, so why don't we just say, look, I got, even if you got 65, 65 yeah. versus is better than 35, right? So take the 65 and just stay because there is no perfect person. And in our minds, we are looking to gravitate all of these pieces of the pie to make one perfect pie when there really isn't. There is no perfect pie. So well, you, you know to- what? That sounds like that. You know what that sounds like, Charles? It sounds like you know instead of a serial killer, a serial dater, somebody who really yeah. cannot make a commitment. Yeah, they really don't have the capacity to make a commitment. They ain't gonna say I don't have the capacity or the ability to make a commitment. But if you got all these friends and that and that and that and this, then you need to just stay in the dating, just stay in the dating lane. But guess what? See, some people argue with that because they would say, "Look, I'm still gonna get married. I'll still get engaged." But that concept, they just won't lose. They're not gonna lose the friend concept. They'll get married. They still gonna have all these people on the on the on the back dial. That's just the truth. That that's an internal decision that has to be made. You have to be able to say, look, you know, this person deserves all of me. Even if it's even if we only got fifty five percent, it's a good fifty five, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make the stagger of the rest. Many of us don't do that. We want to say, I got fifty five over here, but oh my god, that forty five, and you're going on over there to tap and come back. It's just dysfunctional. But if we just say, look, this is what this is the lot I have been casted, so I'm gonna make good with that. Many of us just mm-hmm. don't do that. You know. Okay, so when you talk about when you say something, okay, that was that was really a good percentage that you just said when you said fifty five. That's very low, Mr. Dixon. Truthfully, yeah. right? But that's but that's more but realistic. <laughs> it's very realistic. It's realistic. very low, but it's very real. Realistic. I was just getting ready to say that. Yeah. It's very low, but it's very very true. Right. And sometimes the person may raise up to 62%. Sometimes they may raise up to 70 but for the most part, it's going to stick to that 55 right? right? So if that being the case, where is the person supposed to get the other 45 from? 
guess what? Some of this, see, here's the biggest part. Some mm-hmm. of this stuff we are looking for someone to solve. We need to pull it from within. I was thinking that it's yeah. no one. It's no right. when when we were created, we were created in the fullness. That's right. So we have it all, right? We just don't tap into it. So right. the thing is, we don't have to. You don't. I, I I seriously doubt God made us to just seriously be dependent upon another person for mm-hmm. anything. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? saying? He gave us Absolutely. knowledge, wisdom, uh, streams of incomes to, to make it work. Now, you right. actually said there are instances where things do collapse, fall down, you do need help. That's the purpose of hospitals and other things that we have. But right. you, the point is for you to make a gallant effort on your own. Look, sometimes it's not for you to have red bottoms. Sometimes you can't afford that $2,500 Louis Vuitton bag. You can't. Your money don't say it. So just right. because local Steve that's enamored with you will tell you that he'll buy it, you don't have to tap into it. It's his right. money. Don't complicate yourself with bringing him into your man, husband, fiance, whatever loop, because that's going to make it crazy. If, right. you're, if you can't afford it where you are, whatever you chose to be, that's you guys can't afford it right now. Not to right. say later. You just can't right. afford that lifestyle right now. But right. the thing is, some of us want to be what we want to be. Be selfish, but still, no, but I'm who I am, and I deserve this. So I'm, I'm going to call on my super friends, and I'm going to make sure I'm kept kept where I need to be. You understand what I'm saying? That's the mentality of how people think today. And you know what? And it's a danger in this whole equation. It's a, it's a danger in this whole equation because here's the truth of the matter. You don't know whether you're dealing with a loose cannon or not. Correct. And a person's only going to take so much rejection before they have an explosion. Correct. So if you keep... You keep taking from me, but you keep going over there. At some yeah. at some point, it's going to do something to me internally, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm gonna that can I'm gonna explode. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Because you don't know until you in the in the predicament or the situation. Because you know people always say, "Oh, I would never do this, and I would never do that." I remember my mom used to tell us all the time we were kids, "Never say what you won't." ever do because do. you right. do not know until you're in a predicament to where it manifests you right. know even 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 if you go and not to get real real you know religious but even the bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked no one can know it right. if the creator of the universe will set in motion to tell you that something that's on the inside of you you never will know the truth of what it really has in it yeah, that tells good. you right there that you right. have the capacity to do anything. You don't know what you're yeah. capable of doing in the face of adversity or in the face of you being in love or obsessed with someone so much so that you just you just feel like you got to have them. Well, the more that they reject you, you don't know they, you don't know what how that person going to act. But you but you know what I've learned? And we shouldn't is, put people in predicaments like that. Yeah. We shouldn't put them like that to see how they're going to act either. Yeah, yeah but, but what I've learned is, is if you if we listen and if you get past your script, mm-hmm. people the people give you the truth in their jokes. Be around somebody and wow. hear the things that they wow. constantly be like. I'm just playing. I'm just saying. I'm just joking with you. No, you're not. This is subliminally etched in your in your mind concerning me, and it's something you're telling me mm-hmm. what potential you have to react. Like you may say, "Oh, keep on," because you know what? I'm gonna show up right at your job. You probably will. Mm-hmm. That's why we ain't gonna make it. But anyway, so I'm just saying you need to listen to people when they talk like that. They're serious. Stop right. thinking it's cute. Stop thinking they're crazy about you. They're telling you who they are. You know. Right. I mean. And so, um, you know, another thing is this. Um, when you talk about the placeholders, you one of the cruel positions about a placeholder, the person who's being held, mm-hmm. they really want something. They right. want they want something new. They've been praying. And, you know, some of them been praying and God sends them a new relationship, this, that, and the other. But you have the people that one of the worst things you can positions you can be in is for a person to identify you and stamp you as a placeholder and literally manipulate your position to be just that. And you you'll be swimming trying to get to the top. Oh, see me? You see me? I can be a good wife. I can cook. I can do this. And he's saying that's all fine and well, placeholder. Mm-hmm. But this is where you belong. Do you understand know what I'm saying? That's a terrible position to be in. So That's it's up to you to listen. Man. You got to listen for the cues. And mm-hmm. if it's internally in your gut, because women, you all have the gift of premonition. If it's in your gut, then it's probably what it is. So you mm. just need to just go with it. You know? mm. And then, you know, and then, too, you got to, you know, you have to watch 
the balance of a person. If they got a whole bunch of, um, I hate to say it like this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> if they have a whole lot of opposite sex playmates, okay, okay, and they don't have a, a equal balance, and I'm looking at a comment that Bruce made on here, especially if they got a lot of male buddies but don't trust fe- See, I was thinking that. If they got a lot of male buddies but don't trust me- trust females, it, oh, wow. I, I've been thinking about this like for since you said something about that yeah. um, when you were talking about the uh, the snacks, right? Yes. So you got a whole lot of Skittles right. that you can just go eat whenever you want to, right. okay? Just at your disposal. But why does the Skittles have to be the opposite sex though? Why mm. can't the Skittles be the same gender where you can tie into your own gender, where you can have healthy girl time or healthy guy time, you know, where you can hang out with your homies or whatever. Why it's got to be the opposite sex all the time? Anyway, mm. something is something is wrong if there's too much of the opposite sex in the equation anyway. Oh, wow. If that's yeah. all they gravitate towards and every time you turn around, it's always somebody of the opposite sex. That's a problem right there in itself because that's a whole bunch of open doors. It really is. Correct. Correct. And, you know, you said something in one show a while ago, and you said, God, you, and, and I always think about this, because with me having five brothers, they do some interesting stuff. And I, I ain't going to put my brothers out there. Although I really want to, I ain't going to put them out there. Laugh out loud. Okay, okay. So, but when you really, when you really think about this whole picture of this thing with this opposite sex, you said something that I just, I just can't get it out of my head. You okay. said a guy in most instances is only going to entertain you for his entertainment. Remember when you were talking about that, like saying a guy ain't gonna keep um keep climbing up that fence if he ain't gonna be able to climb over it. Right. You're not gonna just keep saying, you know what, I'm gonna keep running and try to jump this fence. I'm gonna just keep yeah. running and I keep failing. He ain't gonna right. keep running and knowing he can't clear the fence at some point. Right. So. Right. Most of the time when you got a bunch of the opposite sex friends, a lot of them are looking and longing for the position, the ultimate Correct. number one draft pick position. Correct. They're not just sitting there hanging in the balance for no reason. They want something. Of course they do. But that's on both sides. I mean, and the thing of it is, you know, unfortunately, people, let's just be honest. And I said this before, I think some of the reasons we're not able to achieve and we're, we're getting we're almost to the nine o'clock hour. But just so really quickly, some of us, we don't achieve what we achieve because we are hurting one another. Like the women are hurting the women and the mm-hmm. men are hurting the men. We're not doing each other a, a service. So you right. got people who no one respects your relationship no more. Forget about your relationship. Forget about you dating him, whatever. If you, I mean, they don't even respect the marriage. So mm-hmm. on the marriage side of them, I don't care if you're married. That's him. That's his problem. He going on over there to her, but I want him to do this. So nobody, and vice versa, the men, they'll tell mm. you in a minute, hey, so, you know, how are you treating you? Does it matter? I got this on my hand. You see, right. there's a seal. A seal is here. So what does right. it matter how he's treating me? He, I'm not right. dead. He beat me upside the head. So we're right. working it out. But people, right. don't, people don't look at that. They look at it like, where is your, where is the hole I can crawl into and hide in your life? That's pretty mm. much what they're, what they're saying. And so if you are offering that, that's what's going to happen. So you got a lot of people out here that are layered. They're they're committed but layered. That's gonna be a show. But anyway, they they're committed folks, but they got layers of comfort, of under comfort, of under comfort. Oh, and it's absolutely. women and men. So yeah. So until we respect one another as the men and the women, it's gonna continue. So somebody gotta hold, like I said the other day, hold people accountable to say you you right. bogus. You shouldn't be doing this so and so and so, whatever. Right. And, if not, and you can't expect continue. nobody to respect your relationship if you don't. Correct, correct. So a lot of the disrespect is not external, it's internal. Correct. Because people don't get, they don't get, like you just said, if you just cut it off at the, you know, cut it off at the juggle and say, hey, don't you see that, you see this right here? That's all you need to see. When it, matter of fact, you don't even need to say something. You just show them the ring, keep it moving. Don't say nothing. Or or if you, like I said, I'm in a, I'm in a committed relationship. But here's here's where I think people go wrong. Think Think about how many times you probably said this. A guy comes in your life, Here's a new person that you are. You and this person dated some years ago, or you may have not too long recently dated, but you're right. dating someone else, and you really like them, and it's promising. You mm-hmm. moving on. Here comes the old person. So P. Coffee, hey, look, he texting you. I'm trying to get with you so we can go. I want to see you. I want to go out. And you're like, 
you know what? Right now, this is the worst thing women can tell a guy. Right now, I'm seeing somebody. That's not that's not saying I'm done with you. That's just saying go sit on the shelf. I'll be back in case this don't work. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to be clear in your communication or those guys and women are never going to go anywhere. Because if you're just telling them, um, oh, right now I can't be, you got to stop calling me. Don't send me them pictures because I can't because I'm with him. That's just saying I have someone else in your place at the moment. Give me a minute to see how this materializes. If it doesn't, then I'll, I'll consider bring that you come back through. So you're not being done. We're not being definitive in ending these relationships. We're just holding people on over. You going over there on that, the Red Sea over there, you over here, and just wait until I, I, I put a war cry out for help. That's it. You know? That's the placeholders and the serial yeah. daters on tonight. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. We, Dixon, we don't want to hold the folks up too late. Mr. Dixon, this has been an, an, an this this topic right here. It's I don't know if we need to do a sequel or not, but this this right here is it. Uh, next time, we, next time we have to bring some super friends on. We get Mr. Bruce and come. I think we need people. to bring Bruce and CC some on Pastor to the John, next. Some of these other folks yeah, and come. CC, yeah, I Carrie, see, oh, bring, let's bring on having all stars. Yeah, all -star. we need to bring CC and Bruce and Pastor John yeah. and yeah, and, and, and -star Jason. Let's let's, let's, let's yeah. highlight Jason and, and yeah and and Marquita probably. Get, get right. Marquita yeah. in here too. You know, yeah. let's. Yeah, we need that. This is oh my goodness. We don't want to offend poor Marquita. You know, we'll see. We're, no, we'll, no, but she want to roll. She want to roll with us. No. <laughs> but Marquita can roll with us though. You know, I know she got, our, she got our back, man. She part right. of the force. Right. She part of the force, man. You know, part yeah. of the team. You know. But you know what? I this is this has been really good. It's it's a lot into this whole equation of how we handle this. You know, I feel like the takeaway from all this is this: if you really truly want to have a good solid relationship you will have to untie some ties period and you're gonna have to take the risk in hopes of the reward you may not even get the reward but you're gonna have to take the risk because you can't you don't know necessarily if you're gonna get the reward or not but you got to take the risk if you really want the reward but guess what? And some people simply need some. Just like as a kid trying to learn how to tie and untie their shoes, sometimes the help is in you talking. If you mm -hmm. need help in untying something, say, "Baby, I know this is unhealthy, and I'm coming to you because I'm really struggling with how to approach how to do this." Mm -hmm. help, that will do wonders for any relationship because now mm -hmm. the guy says, "Oh, you need me to fix this? Way work out again?" No, I'm just joking. But anyway, I'm just saying. So if you right. bring them in, people can solve problems if you tell them that you need help. But if you mm -hmm. don't say anything, they just gonna leave it to you to do it, and if you struggling, the person ain't never going nowhere. So and that's, and, and that's there goes that communication again. Yeah. That's that's it, Mr. Dixon. That's that communication piece. And then you know the man and the woman have to be respectful enough to say, okay, honey, uh, you know I don't this ain't this ain't comfortable for me, but I care about you and I want this to work. work. So whatever so we gotta do, I'm sacrificing. Yeah, whatever yeah. we gotta do to make sure this don't creep into our house. Let's let's get it done. We don't want no mice yeah. up in here because mice mice reproduce real fast. Correct. You know, we don't want no rodents up in here. So let's let's clean this and, up. And you need to have that honest conversation, that selfish conversation. You know, tell people, are you let's just be straight. Are you content with the percentage of us? Right. Have that conversation. Are you content with our percentage? Mm -hmm. We have fifty five percent. How's that look to you? Because mm -hmm. if that forty five is more important to you, I I'm willing to step back. Right. But you gotta be honest. And you right. can't, you know. And then, like you said before, you got to make sure you go back and check the temperature of that relationship on a frequent basis. Right. Don't don't go without checking the temperature because the weather will change. It will. It will change. Well, Mr. Dixon, it's been real. It's been fun, but it ain't been real fun. All so right. uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you again for being here, sir. Your presence is is always appreciated, and we and I'm grateful. For you being here and um, helping to keep this ship steered in the right direction, mm -hmm, uh -huh. you know, on tonight. So thank you for that, sir. Uh, the people will have to tune in to Unique Perspectives Love Talk Radio next Monday night at eight. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you for spending the time with you and the posse. You got anything juicy in the works, Mr. Dixon? Anything juicy coming? I don't know. I, I have some things on in the. I have some things that I'm definitely. I have them lined up, but I've been getting a lot of inboxes in regards to this starvation. So I'm on the fence about the starvation topic. I don't mm-hmm. know. We're trying to make it into a show. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I'll see. Yeah, All I'm gonna right. think it's I think you need to go and talk about that starvation because I'm finna go get some meat right now. So I won't. <laughs> eat. Now I'm nervous to come tonight. You know, all that's right. important to get the proper nutrition. That was good. That's real good. All right. All right. So thank you so much for your time, sir. And everybody, thank you all for your comments and being on with us each and every week. We greatly appreciate you. Without y'all, there is no us. We wouldn't have anybody to talk to if y'all didn't show up. So thank you for always being on, and we're going to work harder to to make sure that we tie into the tap into the comments a little bit more frequently um, in the dialogues when you guys chime in and everything. So when we sometimes when it's two of us, it's hard to do that, but we'll be able to work around that. We're working on some things to make sure that we can tie greater into the comments. Isn't that right, Mr. Dixon? All right. Well, thank you for your time, sir. You have an incredible night, and we'll see you all next week, sir. All right, you too. Same bad time, same bad channel. Good night.